There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. And today we're talking unplugging in the Texas Hill River region. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. Hey, we've got another Ask Shauna question, and this question comes from Dakota. Dakota says, Hi, Shauna. I'm planning to move to a new city without job prospects. I'm willing to work any job, but I want to be prepared to not have a consistent income. How much should I save before leaving? I have about 12000 in savings, but the cost of living in the new city is significantly higher than in my current location. Should I aim to cover expenses for a certain period of time? What's the best way to predict expenses from across the country? Is it possible, in your opinion, for me to make this move and stay financially intact? I'm too much of a planner to make this choice impulsively. Thanks in advance for all your advice, Dakota. Well, Dakota, that is an awesome question, and uh, I picked this one specifically because I'm getting a lot of questions lately about people wanting to move, wanting to even move out of the country or just to another state and trying to figure out whether it makes sense. So I think there are a couple of things to think about. The first is, you know, can you at least make some connections on LinkedIn or with friends in your new city to start finding out about possible jobs before you even make the move. That's really going to give you, you know, a leg up when you get there and you start looking for a job. But I think the important thing is to try and at least get some kind of job once you move, even if it's part-time or a lower paying job, just to reduce the drag on your savings. You know, a lot of times we're like, well, I'm going to hold out for my perfect job, but holding out for your perfect job could sometimes take months, if not years, and really could leave you, you know, in a tight spot. So I would say, you know, if you could save at least six months worth of your fixed expenses, and then I would add about a 20 to 30% pad on top of that for your variable expenses, that might put you in, you know, a decent position to make the move without a job. But obviously, the more money that you can save, the more months that you can save an amount to, you know, really beef up that pad, 
the more opportunity you're going to give yourself for having choices to find the job versus, you know, just having to take a job that maybe you don't want to do, but you just need to take the job to cover your expenses. Another thing is to think about, you know, putting that savings in some sort of high yield savings account where you're going to earn the most amount of interest possible. Anything like Ally Bank has one, Capital One 360, Synchrony, Discover's got one, American, American Express, Goldman Sachs has one. So you're looking for a savings account where you can earn 1% interest plus. But you know, really just focus on doing whatever you can now to save as much money as humanly possible before you make that move. And then another thing you can do is, you know, you can Google and research what is the average cost of living in the city where you're moving to. And I know you said that you already know that it's going to be a lot more expensive, but if you can figure out, you know, what is going to make it more expensive, is it the housing Is it that you're going to have a commute and maybe you need a car and so your gas prices are going to go up and insurance and all of those sorts of things? If you can really identify what are those costs that are going to increase and then are there any costs that might decrease, like that would be really good for you to figure that out as well. And then also, you know, have a plan B. What if it doesn't work? You know, what's too uncomfortable for you? You know, if you get to the end of your your pad, your six months or your nine months or however much money you've saved up and you don't have a job, what are you going to do? You know, is it is it that you're going to still stay there and stick with it? Or, you know, is there someplace else you can move to? Uh, can you move in with a roommate? Uh, you know, what can you do that will you know, boost your chances of being able to stay there, but it might not be option A, maybe it's option B, but it will keep you going. So at the end of the day, you know, I think life is short. Take a risk. Certainly like get out of your comfort zone. I I think that there, even if it costs money, that's just a really great experience to have in life. But, you know, be willing to reassess if things don't look up within, you know, six months or a year when you're there, you know, maybe there's another place you're supposed to be. Maybe there's another job someplace else. So keep your, keep your mind open. But, you know, I say take a leap, take a leap of faith, try something new. What's the worst case that happens? You move back to where you started from. I don't think at the end of the day, that's the worst case. So thanks so much for sending this question in, Dakota. If you have a question that you want me to answer on the Ask Shauna section, head to the link in the show notes and leave me a question. You belong among the wildflowers You know, unplugging is not something we we all do very well these days, right? You know, and, and we have a really warped uh, speed of life that we all live these days, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I think everything just moves so fast, it's hard to figure out how to take a break or even slow down. Exactly. And vacations, even when you go on vacation, they can turn into a long list of activities to do, like eating, sightseeing, of course, you know, eating some more, then you got to actually social media all that out too, right? Yeah, that's totally exhausting. I mean, that's the part of social media that just totally kills me is there is nothing relaxing about social media to me at all. I mean, in fact, I mean, I think I could do without it. I understand its purpose, but you know, well, I, I mean, know. social media can actually take over your vacation as well, too. I mean, you know, you're you're, you're always maybe trying to compete with everyone else, and uh, so you know, it really and, and it also takes over our daily lives as well as when we're on vacation and stuff like that. So, so that's what we we kind of want to explore in this travel episode, and and we found a place. Uh, that we really got to unplug and get away, and and not because that there's not service there, and not because you know you you, you don't you can't find Wi-Fi or something. You, you you totally can. It's just 
you know, this was a time we said, hey, you know what, we're going to unplug, we're going to relax, we're going to enjoy, of course, we social media, because we're actually working on these trips, but we we're, we found a place, the Texas Hill River region, uh, which is uh, located in Uvalde County, which is about an hour and a half or so outside of San Antonio, and it is a beautiful area, and we just really unplugged, explored, and and got away for a few days, and got basically kind of went off the grid, if you will. Yeah. And I think, you know, there are real benefits to unplugging. I know that's kind of like a popular word that we throw around a lot, but I think that the cost, if you will, of unplugging occasionally is worth doing so because I think there are, there are some real benefits, you know, you're able to really relax and rest, which is important. And we're really not talking about unplugging as, as an just not having your phone for the night more no. than more than more than just that i think it's i take, mean these are the benefits that you could actually have taking yourself out of the surroundings that you're in yeah. you know for me i mean it definitely helps like boost productivity it's been known to increase creativity and also i found this interesting in an article i read reduce the long-term risk of potentially fatal ailments and i think we don't think about that often but i mean i know when i go on vacation or on a trip, and I am in a different place, like there's a there are bricks that feel like they're lifted off of me. And so I think there's a real uh, true benefit to, you know, unplugging whatever that may mean for you. Yeah, I mean, even even for myself, you know, having to, to work on a lot of uh, trips that, that I go on, uh, I still feel a mental break a lot of times from you know, the daily grind of whatever you have to do, and you, I could really kind of get lost and, and enjoy wherever I'm going and whatever I'm doing, uh, you know. And and so I think you know finding places like you know the Texas Hill River region, places like this, are you know are really places to sort of get away. And there's so many places around the country. I'm sure where you live. Not even too far, something like maybe it's a couple hours drive, maybe it's a, a, a you know quick flight away, and you could find a place like this and, and really get away. I mean, California is really made up of so many places that we can go all the time, and sometimes we do take advantage of them, sometimes we don't. But you know, so that's what we kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about this episode. Um, you know, um, and don't you think also when you kind of get away, you know, you're devoting a lot of your attention to those things when when you're there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the goal. And I think as a as a couple, if you're in a relationship at all, you know, unplugging, getting away, uh, all of those things, they not only have uh, benefits of being able to like reconnect as a couple, but I do think it does something to your brain. You know, a lot of people do like meditation and yoga and things like that to help them like detox from daily life. And I think going on a, a trip to someplace, you know, like Texas – hill river region is uh you know a a place it's like meditation i mean it's for us it was completely taking us outside of our normal environment you know we live in la and like a very hustle bustle city so it's taking us away from that and i think you know again i don't i don't know if we can say it enough like to me the benefit of being able to do that is worth so much to you just I'm almost like every aspect of your life. Yeah, well, and and the article that you mentioned too, they also had a, a couple other interesting stats here that it says that studies have shown that people that engage in deeper, more meaningful conversations uh, with the absence of their mobile devices, um, even when people aren't actively checking them, the mere awareness that their smartphone is turned on and close to them leads to distracted and lower quality uh, interactions. So, devoting your full attention to say a vacation. And you get away and you kind of, you know, that is like a meditation and it actually uh, activates your prefrontal cortex as well. Yes. And I want all the prefrontal cortex activation that I can humanly possibly get. (laughs) What did you think? Because we have so many devices that have, that store so much information, we don't store as much information in our brain a lot. We store a lot of stuff, but maybe we don't have as much information as we used to, like phone numbers or something, something like that. So, you know, I think doing kind of this practice and getting away and vacationing. And my, my idea is always, you know, get away, you know, go on a trip, whatever it is and you know get away from your regular life and and this is how you you grow and expand so you know that those are those are my benefits to travel and in my uh sage wisdom there um 
So let's talk about uh, the uh, Texas Hill River region. Uh, we really had a great time. And there's so many things to do there, which I think is really cool. Um, fun fact before we get started. Uvalde is the hometown of Mr. All Right, All Right, All Right, uh, Matthew McConaughey. Yes, ladies. This is the place he was born. So, mm. you know, then you might find some other Matthew McConaughey-esque like people. And I believe they're, they're still, they still live in Texas, right? They live in Austin, I think. Uh, I think occasionally. I'm not sure. Matthew hasn't let me know, you know, his exact whereabouts, but. Right. So we're in the middle of winter uh, in a lot of places, parts of the country and, and the world uh, right now. Um, so you probably, you might be freezing. I think there's a big snowstorm hitting uh, this week or this weekend and stuff around the country. Uh, so you're maybe thinking like, oh, you know, I want to get away. I want to maybe, you know, hit the water somewhere. Um, and the, you know, the Texas Hill river region, they have a lot of rivers down there and the Frio river is their most popular and tubing is the name of the game down there. I mean, tubing is so popular. We were there a little off season. So the river was a lot lower. Um, but there were still tubers around there and hanging out. And I think that time of year was maybe even cooler cool because, you know, when at the height of summer, it is packed there. Yeah. Uh, tubing is like a, Texas thing yeah. too. Uh, I know as a little kid when I lived in Texas, I went tubing and I actually have a little bit of a horror story, around, not horror, a little story around tubing when we had all gone tubing. And I was like a little kid and I'd actually fallen out of the tube and swam to the side. But tubing, like, like I remember as a little kid, like going tubing, it was like there were so many people there and it was such like a cool atmosphere, even when I was a little kid. And so as an adult, you know, it like takes on a whole other meeting. I mean, they've got like a tube set up for your beverages that you, you know, pull down the river with you. I mean, it is like a all day event. Yeah. And I think the cool part about this area too, they do have hotels and they do have like, but they have more resorts and cabins and stuff. So along all these rivers, like we, we had a really great ca cabin right along the river, uh, right outside of our door and stuff. So you could just go and launch in, in the tubing, you know, there, but the cool thing for my experience of tubing, you know, sometimes they'll have, you know, river tubing and you can launch from here or there, but this is a place there's so a, there's so many rivers and so many places, so much water there there but they have a lot of places to launch which i think is really cool and and so so wherever you kind of stay uh what you know you don't have to stay just within the areas we stayed and you know there's so much so many places to stay and to launch so i think that's really great for for a tubing area and i think that's why it's one of the best tubing places uh, tubing areas in the country yeah, and I think, you know, also with tubing, there's a lot of fly fishing yeah. along the river, uh, rivers, yeah. and, you know, that's another cool activity that we discovered, like, to me, that is now my new, like, stress-free passion. Yeah, and we got a guide this time uh, to kind of, you know, guide us around. I mean, that was fun. You know, they, they were biting a little bit. You, you got, you, you caught a few there. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't my best fly fishing attempt, but, you know, that's well, right. Like again. I, like I said, I think when, when we were there, the river was a little bit low, um, but it was, it was, it was nice, and it it was fun. One of the things we discovered too, um, you know, I think this is one of the premier areas for, for motor, motorcyclists. There is a 100 mile loop, um, for uh, motorcycle riding along the Twisted Sisters highways that kind of all merge and there's like these crazy hills and sheer drops and, and we drove it in a car. Uh, and even at night, it was a little hairy at times. You're like, whoa, okay, you know, so I can imagine, you know, motorcyclists, you know, I know a, a few friends that would uh, would actually really love, uh, you know, this area. So that was kind of cool to, to, to find that as well, too. Um, and then we got to see our bats. Yeah, we saw... Uh, what was it? Three million bats Th fly out of a cave over our head. It was... I mean, I'm not obviously not a bat fan, but it was one of those experiences that, you know, you're pretty much going to remember for the rest of your life. Now, this is the Frio uh, bat flight, and, and it's a thing that you could do, they do every night um, at, at sundown. And you can, you drive in and you drive far into, to where the bat cave is. So we were there when it was around 3 million bats, but, uh, uh, during the year at their peak can be around 24 million bats. And this is the second largest cave in America. The largest cave, I believe, is in San Antonio, right? Yeah. 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 That 
That is the, that's the biggest one. So this is the second biggest one, which is really amazing. But I thought it was a really natural wonder. I, I was amazed, you know, and our guide was really cool, really given a throwing down a lot of bat information. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't scary at all. It was just more you were kind of in awe that that many bats lived in this cave and that they'd come out every single night to go and hunt for their food. It was just, you know... In, in the formation that they fly in. And it was just, it really was like almost one of once in a lifetime experiences to, yeah. to see. And I, and, and I, you know, I've grown up in Southern California, so I never even knew we even had bats. Unfortunately, a few months ago, we had one in our house, uh, fly in and, and sort of take over. We named him Benny the bat. Um, so, uh, but I've seen people do these bat flights and go on, you know, sundown and, and check them out. So I was like, Oh, I always want to check that out. And so when this opportunity came up, I'm like, Oh, we for sure have to do this. I, I really wanted to do this, and it was totally fascinating. And they they even shot a documentary there a few years ago um, for a couple weeks uh, in this bat cave. I don't want to go in the bat cave because it smelled really bad outside, but it was it was totally fascinating uh, to to check it out as well too. So um, as well, some of the other nature things we did, we we, we did some horseback riding, but. Horseback riding is great. You can do that a lot of different places. But they actually had, at Elk Creek Stables, actually had uh, rescue horses. And our guides, uh, George and Beverly, they're like the total salt of the earth kind of people, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, they, they just love what they do. They're so passionate about horses and about the area. And, you know, it was just, it was a cool experience to be able to go out on a ride with them. I'm I'm sort of a nervous Nelly around horses. Um, and I was a little freaked out because mine kept stopping and um, going on its own little path. But, you know, they're, they're just, I mean, they would ride up around us and shoo the horses along. And, you know, just to be able to like stare out at nature, I think it's something we don't do on a daily basis. And, you know, it was just such a, a treat. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and I think it's 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 fun too that 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 not only that they're rescuing horses, they're rescuing other animals as well too. So so we did a lot of other really neat. We got to see the whole area and so many other nature things. There's so many. We got to go on walks and there's just so much to do in this whole area. And we're going to talk about that in some of our interviews. Um, you know, now this area too is also growing in uh in 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 you know food and. But one of the traditional places, Neil's Dining Room, uh, that opened especially for us, uh, known for their famous fried chicken, has one of the best views in the area. So if you are in this area, when you go travel this area, Neil's uh, Dining Room really has this awesome view of the gorge. And you can really, you know, uh, take some really great pictures there and, and have, a, have a great meal t- uh, there. It feels like you're just like sitting in someone's actual, you know, home, ta- home dining room and, and hanging out there and having some, some great chicken. Uh, one of the things that we discovered too, a real famous at Lost Maples Cafe was, uh, what we call crack pie and, uh, buttermilk pie. I've never even heard of buttermilk pie before. I have, but this was my first time tasting it and I am in love with buttermilk pie. I could eat it all day long, every single day. This pie was amazing. Yeah, and this is in uh, Uvalde, or not in, or sorry, in Utopia. Um, and uh, we're, all the cities are with you. So no, with just, you, just yeah, kidding. yeah, exactly. That's why it threw me off. Yeah, Utopia, uh, Texas, there, uh, which we're actually going to talk about as well, where they have a couple festivals. The, the cool thing about this area, there was a lot of festivals that they have uh, a year round, music festivals and different, all kinds of different ones. But Las Mabel's Cafe is known for their pies. They have a list of pies they make on a, on a fresh on a daily basis um and and we had breakfast there but we had to have some pie with breakfast and that was a i think a, a real life changer yeah definitely a life changer okay so our first interview is with an actual cowboy or at least a cowboy storyteller and we got to hang out with this cowboy storyteller for a few hours and and had a lot of fun uh with lee yeah, it was quite an experience. I mean, I, I've never been around a storyteller necessarily before, and the man can tell a mean story. Yeah, so normally, you know, Lee Haley, he's he's a, he's a cowboy storyteller. He's a poet. He's a musician. He he's basically does a lot, all, all kinds of really great things. Discovers water holes right before he met us. Um, but he's a really cool guy and knows he, he's native to the area. Um, went to college and came back there and has lived there for, for many years and knows so much about the area. But, but we got to hang out with Lee. He's, he's he, Like I said, he's a cowboy storyteller, 
And usually he will do this around a campfire site, but it was just the two of us. So we got to hang out and, and he told us a few stories at, at dinner and, and he's going to actually give us a little history of the Texas Hill River region and how the area was, was shaped. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, Gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin T A L K A N Money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin Money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T O S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be buried in an avalanche? Weird foreign feeling of despair. Or how it feels to crash a skydive? I remember hearing a thud, feeling my body hit the ground. 
or how you would react if you were being attacked by an alligator? At the end of my leg is this huge alligator head on my leg. These are the stories you'll hear on the podcast called What Was That Like? True stories told by the actual person who went through it. You'll hear from a victim of an attack. Dragging me into the bathroom and saying, I'm going to kill you, now you're going to die. You'll hear from a man who discovered a baby. How could this be? How could there be a baby on the ground? And you'll hear actual 911 calls. Clanky County 911, there's a man at my back door. He's trying to get in. What Was That Like is a podcast about real people in unreal situations. Search for What Was That Like on any podcast app or at What Was That Like. Dot com. All right. So tell us, Lee, uh, you were telling us a little bit this, this morning on our tour, but you know, what makes this area of Texas just such a unique area? Well, it, it, I grew up here and it's like a lot of things when you grow up, you don't realize it till you move away. And then you kind of start seeing it from the outside. And when you come back to it, you learn to appreciate it differently, you know, and that's kind of the way it was for me. And, uh, when you grow up with stuff all the time, you don't realize how unique it is to get away. And when I came back, I realized how much, how unique this area is because it, it really is the biological crossroads of North America. This is where east meets west and north meets south, right here in the edge of the hill country here. And I usually use trees to point to people and show them we have stuff like madrone trees and, and, and pinon trees that make it into the hill country that are all western species. We have stuff like golden ball lead tree and some of those that are found down in Mexico that make it into the hill country. And then we have dogwood trees and black walnut and red cherry and all of those that you find in the Appalachia that are all in these deep canyons, depending on how it's set up. These deep canyons that stay a lot of shade, stay cooler and wetter, that, that's where we have even maple trees. Right. You know, there's even a park called Lost Maples over here. And so we, you get that big diversity of all this vegetation, that and added to the fact that this is the major flyway for all the birds coming out of uh, South America. And they, when they hit the Texas coast or come around the bend in Mexico, when they hit these rivers, they start working their way north up through this here, following these rivers. And this is the hill countries where they start breaking off, and the western species all roll out into West Texas and, into, and on over to California and all up that way. And the other ones will roll out and go out through Louisiana and all up through the mid, to the uh, northeast. Then the prairie ones just move on through, and then our ones we have here. So we have a huge diversity of birds that draws a lot of birders in here, too. And and that and crystal clear streams. Yeah, you know. tell us a little bit about like the different lakes around this area and kind of one of the activities that the people do. Well, one of the things we don't have a whole lot of lakes here because this is such a porous limestone area. Uh, you can't build a lake and get it to hold very well. Right. So you got to get out of the hills before you'll start seeing lakes like that. Uh, but what we do is have a lot of spring-fed rivers. There's there's eleven different ones that originate out of the hill country right here. Uh, and there's the highest point. And you look on a river map, and there's a point not too far from where we're sitting here. Uh, it's, it's, it looks like a spider web. Rivers radiating out in all directions from that high point there. And, um, and all of them are spring-fed, so when dry times, they run a lot lower than they do no other times. Ha we have no snow, so it's no snow melt. <laughs> but we also do get these huge, I love it, the weathermen are now calling them rain events. Right. You know? And we get these times where we just get these mega storms that come in, and... Uh, and it'll dump 8, 10, up to 15. The largest one I remember was 27 inches in, in 12 hours overnight. Wow. You know, I lost a friend in that one there. Uh, tried to cross a, a, a bridge and, and got washed off. Anyway, but because uh, it, it happened in the middle of right. the night. Right, right, right. Uh, and so we get these big old huge flash floods too. That's why you see all that gravel where, the, where we're at on the river over here. Uh, you don't see trees lined up against it much like that because these things come through and just wipe it out and move the gravel around makes for real clear water makes it pretty tough for the trees but uh also we we've learned a lots of different things i growing up around here i've always respected the rise of water and how fast it can happen you know texas has a new saying now turn around don't drown you see it on all the crossings everywhere uh and when i went back into the appalachian country i'd see these houses built five feet off the river it's like, are y'all crazy? Right. You know, because <laughs> our river can get, it, it, this thing will crest at 25, 30 feet. And uh, the ones over towards Austin will crest out 50 to 60 feet. Wow. So, you know, it, it, sometimes you can be a half mile from the river and still get flooded. Just depends on how it goes. So everybody has learned to respect it. And what happens is that you go through a dry period like we did, 
at, for 10 years where we don't get a lot of flooding, and people that move in will buy land and build down too close again. Wow. You know, yeah. That's what happened at Wimberley. It was, a, it was a record flood without a doubt, but most of those places that got washed out so bad, they'd built down places where the old timers never would have built. Yeah. You know? So uh, what are some of the favorite things that people like to do on the river? Oh, without a doubt, and, I, and it seems to be a Texas thing. It, the number one sport in Texas on the rivers is tubing. We call it tubing or floating the river, just getting an inner tube, you know, and sitting there and floating down the river. And it really is relaxed. It's a good way to spend an afternoon with your friends, you know. Uh, There's even, uh, I was reading on the website, you know, the whole theory behind how you get an extra tube where you put your cooler in and you're, I mean, there's a whole I whole culture you, to this. Yeah, I, show, I should show you a picture. When I showed you one of that big kayak group that I did this last, uh, there were some guys on the river there, uh, several couples, guys and girls. Of course, they had their ice chest sitting there, but this was a new one I'd never seen. They had an extra big inner tube, big around <laughs> twice this table, and in the middle of it was a blow-up bull. And this bull was like a bucket bull, and that was an arena. And they were pulling that down the river. Nice. <laughs> Whatever. But now, you know, nowadays, nowadays uh, everybody has vinyl stuff, built-in cup holders. Right. I even saw one the other day. It, it was like an easy chair, a lounge chair, side-by-side side with the arms and everything else, and floating down the river like that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm used to getting your arms all worn out from running on an inner tube. How, and how far can you normally float if you're float? I mean, do you have to get uh, out and? It, you know, it just depends on the river flow. Right. If you're brave and you and you want to hit them high water times, well, you can go a long ways real fast. Right. <laughs> and in fact, one of my favorite kayak runs on the Nueces River, I mean, on the Frio River a few years ago, and it was the middle of the week, couldn't find anybody else to go with me. I thought, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to miss this one. And I, I, it was only running about four foot high. It had been up about eight or ten, but it dropped back down, which is always when you want to do it. You don't do it while it's rising. You always got to wait for it to come back down. It'll clear out. By then, the fences are out. Then all the logs are out, and it's much safer. You never get in a river while it's still raining, and you never get in a river if you still see stuff floating in it because mm-hmm. if stuff floating in it, it's still rising. And so uh, I caught it. It was running crystal clear. It was running about four foot high from more normal, and this run, a kayak run usually takes an, two hours, a little over two hours. I did it in 45 minutes, wow. and it was fun. <laughs> Had four and five foot standing waves, 15 or 20 in a row. So after the first one, I was just busting through all the others. It was, it was a, one of the best trips I've ever had. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> so uh, last question. So one of the thing, I think unique things about you is you're also a storyteller and a musician and stuff like that. And I think that's a real cool, authentic cowboy way that you come you know, to this place, especially if you're not maybe from around these parts. Uh, tell us a, real quick a little bit about your storytelling and, your, and, your, and your, you know, your music and stuff. You know, I've thought about it, and I think probably where this, where this maybe got started for me was that ranch I was telling you we had up here on the head of the Nueces River. It was 19 miles off the pavement, so we didn't get TV. And you, uh, uh, late at night, we had an old type of radio. It was much older than I am. It makes it sound like I was way back when. It was just something left over from that generation before. Sure. But we had it up there, and late at night, we could get uh, a station out of, out of uh, Fort Worth and one out of Louisiana. They had a show called Louisiana Hayride. Okay, yeah. So you, most of the time, you, after when you ate supper, and after that, you sat around and visited. Mm. You know, and especially we were up there mostly during hunting season, and it's kind of a tradition when you come back from the hunt, you talk about what you saw mm-hmm, at the hunt. Sure, yeah. And I, me starting hunt when I was real young, I'm sure they were always rolling their eyes. They went, what did you see, Lee? And here I went to a 45-minute dissertation of what I saw, even if it was only birds. Right, right. <laughs> and I think that's kind of what started that whole oral tradition to yeah. me. Uh, and then when I left home and got out of college, I made a conscious decision to not take tv and so for many years i had nothing but music i love mm-hmm. music so i had a stereo every place i move into the first thing i did was hook up the stereo the last thing i did was unplug it <laughs> and i keep music going and like a lot of people use tv as background i always had music for background mm-hmm. and uh and it would drive me crazy to go to people that would have their tv on and then instead of sitting and watch it they want to talk to you and i'm sitting there going All right let's watch it or talk one or the other <laughs> <laughs> anyway so Grew up a little different in that way, but that's the way I raised my daughters and girls, too. And, mm. and uh, one of the best compliments I ever had from a guy one time, he was a fellow ag consultant. Mm. We were doing some work together. He came over. We worked all day. Then we ate supper. Then we went out on the porch, and we started talking. Mm. And at one point, he says, 
Yeah, I have to give it to you, hand it to you. The art of conversation has not been lost in your house. <laughs> and I, well, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, so people can actually come down here and hire you to tell stories and play guitar. Yeah, so like, right? oh yeah, yeah, yeah which I, I think a, is a totally unique, you know. Yeah, you know, there, you, it's easy to find musicians yeah. around. You don't find many who uh, will tell stories, and mm-hmm. and and, mm-hmm. Uh, and the stories I tell, you know, I'll tell everybody. There's there's really two different kinds of stories. There's the stories of the old man sitting around a fire or sitting around something like this, mm-hmm. and he's uh, and you know somebody say, hey, tell us about that bucket. He'll tell you something, and he's sitting there. The ones I do are. I call them performance storytelling. Mm-hmm. I have to stand up because I yeah. use my hands, yeah. go through animation. I do yeah. a lot of different voices and stuff with it. So, All right. So to round out our Texas Hill River region uh, talk here, um, when we were in Utopia in, there in Texas, so we we're having some crack pie. We were unplugging. We were unplugging. And we got to visit uh, this amazing restaurant. The only thing we didn't get to do was actually eat there and, and uh, meet in person the head chef and creator of this, but we got to actually talk with her on, on the yeah, phone. Yeah, my heart's breaking that we didn't actually get to eat the food because this literally, this restaurant is, the Laurel Tree restaurant is like you have entered Europe in the middle of the Texas River region and it is just a stunner. Yeah, and we we had Laurel Chef Laurel Waters on the show talking about her her amazing restaurant uh, that is open one day a week on Saturdays a, a few months ago. Um, so she's going to give us an insight. Again, she's a native to the area, and she's going to give us an insight to the area. Talk about the many outdoor activities that there are to do in the Texas Hill River region, uh, including, of course, her amazing restaurant that also has a treehouse uh, right in the middle of it as well. Yeah, and how she decided to unplug by starting this restaurant, I think is a, you know, it's really cool. We should link the podcast episode to her so you can go back and check all that out. Yeah, and also she also has a, her Bears Den restaurant. Uh, they have a bar, uh, which is in, in Lakey, Texas, that we got to visit, which is really great, too. So, so she's a real great entrepreneur. So enjoy our conversation with Chef Laurel Waters. Well, Laurel, thanks for for joining us, uh, talking about Uvalde and, and Hill Country and the, the river region and stuff like that. And I think it's a really cool place, you know, to escape and unplug and get away from. What are some cool things to do that you like to experience in you know the, the Hill Country and River uh, uh, region and stuff? You know, there's so much to do, uh, but I would say one of my very favorite things about the area is the stars and that, you know, this could be just about anywhere that you are, you know, especially where we are in utopia and the smaller towns and stuff. Sometimes there's so many stars. You can hardly even pick out the constellations, you know, and the sunsets and the sunrises. And I mean, just from wherever you are, it's some new viewpoint or new color or, you know, it's just, it's absolutely unbelievable. Even the storms that we get are crazy, you know, with the lightning shows and, (laughs) you know, I mean that kind of thing, but There's so many fun things to do and, you know, where where we are, Utopia, and then I have another businesses over in uh, Lakey with my husband, um, which is just 20 minutes over the hill. But both of us are, both both Utopia and Lakey are located right between Lost Maples State Park and Garner State Park. Both are about 20 minutes away from from each town and just driving through the area alone, motorcyclists, you know, motorcycle groups, car clubs, everything, you know, all those little roads around through that area are, um, you know, very well known. Um, you know, you've got the Garner state park, which is known for the Frio river for the camping, the hiking. Um, I think people even do rappelling and things like that over there on the cliffs and stuff, you know, um, we've, yeah, right. we've got bat caves that you can go visit and see. see the, oh, <laughs> yes, yeah. we did get to, we did get to check that. Oh, out. Oh yeah, it's it's yes. incredible. You know, we now have a a little vineyard too, right up north of Utopia, which is crazy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's all kinds right. of fun stuff to do out there. Well, and your Laurel Tree Restaurant too is a real hidden gem in a small town there in, in Utopia. Um, have you noticed more travelers from around the world coming to your restaurant or even just the area alone? We do get some international customers, yeah. And there's a lot of draw. I think that, you know, it's the the state parks that I mentioned, um, you know, just getting out of the city and all that. You know, with the internet nowadays, you can find anything anywhere, you know. So people are, you know, traveling from quite far. You could, there's very often, you know, at lunch or dinner, you'll see hear different foreign accents and stuff. And it's fun to say, you know, where are you from or what brought you here? And, um, you know, it could be the restaurant or it very well could be because of Garner State Park or because of, 
you know, other mm-hmm. things to do that they found in Uvalde County. And then once they booked their trip, then, you know, looking online and everything found the restaurant. So, um, you know, there's a lot of draw out there. Absolutely. Well, since you opened the restaurant, have you noticed that the food scene in in, in the area has gotten a little bit better too? Because, I mean, it seems like there's a few newer restaurants um, when we were vis- visited there. Yeah, there's some newer restaurants, you know, and um, there's some, you know, some in Uvalde and then some out and around. Um, you know, Concan is a lot of fun. It's super fun. There's when you drive through Concan, there's really not that much there. But, um, you know, once again, the Frio River and everything. But every little business that's there is really, really cool, really interesting. Um, some food trucks, uh, different things like that. We have, mm. we've got we have Bear's Market in Lakey is our big store, Robert, my husband, and I. And then we have Bear's Den out back, which I can tell you about. But we also do a food truck down there on River Road. And, uh, yeah, oh, okay. there's been a couple of other little food stalls and things like that that show up. Summertime along the Frio River is a huge draw. But now, you know, getting into fall and holiday and stuff like that, there's there's hunting. There's, like I said, the motorcycling, you know, all that stuff. There's a lot of reasons to come out to Uvalde County really all year long. So, um, and you mentioned, uh, Bear's Den. So we went to Bear's Den before we came to visit, uh, the Laurel Tree. And we just were saying how, you know, unique Bear's Den was and Bear's Market. And just, it was just, you know, very unique spot for the area. And then we, of course, came to Laurel Tree. And of course, it all made sense because they're all unique. <laughs> um, you know, what made you guys think of doing a gourmet market and wine shop and, you know, Bear's Den in, in that area? Well, you know, in Utopia, we're on the Sabinal River and it's very quiet. It's very private, you know, and that kind of thing. But the Frio River is just over the hill, just over the mountains, you know, about 15, 8, 20 minutes away from us. And that's where Garner State Park is and Concan and Lakey. Those are all along the Frio River. And there's like 2,000 places to rent over there. And you hear it all the time. People that have come all their lives to Garner State Park and floated the Frio or, you know, rented places, gone hunting, that kind of thing. And now they're bringing their children out there. Mm. You know, there's this generational following for that whole side of the hill over there. And up until now, everybody's really been bringing everything with them from the city, bringing their nice wines mm. or, you know, the things they're going to cook at their cabin and, and all that. And, and Robert and I, we really wanted to make a destination market, like the Laurel Tree has become a destination restaurant. So that people will say, if you're Mm -hmm. anywhere near Bears Market, you've got to go and provide all that stuff, you know, things that are stuffed, skewered, marinated, ready to go for the pit, all my favorite sauces, seasoning, spices, you know, small amount of grocery to go along. Um, We have a very eclectic wine selection, things that you can't get for 100 miles. People are shocked when they walk in and they're like, you know. Yeah. We, we were, so we like, were as well. Oh my, the prisoner, or Robert Mondavi, you know, maestro, like what in Lakey, Texas, you know? And, um, then also we've got a full coffee bar, full ice cream bar. I have a gummy bear bar. I'm a gummy bear fanatic. So I knew I wanted to be a gummy bear bar and people go crazy when they walk in. It's hilarious. And then we do, you know, camping and picnic and gifts and home decor. And I'm a kitchen gadget kitchen gadget person so you know all kinds of stuff like that for you love letters you know although it's we just need to rekindle a little romance and that's what we're trying to do with the restaurant and then the new treehouse project and all that stuff and we need to keep writing more love letters to each other you know we're forgetting how to do that so uh love letters journals um you know just about everything it's a it's a it's a big store it's it's about ten thousand square feet and um you know, it's actually a rough road getting there. I don't know if if when you guys went to visit, but uh, when we bought the property back in fall of 2014, we were remodeling to make our big bears market and all that stuff, and it actually burned to the ground. Mm-hmm. So oh, it was awful. Oh, wow. It was terrible. Yeah. It was a construction accident. So uh, what saved mm-hmm. us, I'm kind of leading up to how Bears Den came about. What saved us was mm-hmm. we were already putting up this, this red barn out back, this 4,000 square foot barn for feed and storage and and it saved us because we, as fast as we could, we converted that red barn into what was our usable stores, after, you know, so we could recover from mm. the rubble and, and rebuild. And mm. we've now done that. We've built our bigger, better bear. But that left us with this investment in this red barn sitting out back that, that was now 
through all those changes, it was now set up for food service with a full kitchen and an office and restrooms and air conditioning and all that stuff. So um, we decided to go ahead and open up Bear's Den. Now we saw it open that recently too. And it's, it's um, all leather club chairs and couches and televisions and kind of a wine area with a full library wall and little fireplaces and kind of your den away from home. And so that's how Bear's Den came along and we do Robert's awesome barbecue and um, pizza and small plates and, you know, yummy appetizers and things like that, that you can, you can buy beer and wine in Lakey. So, you know, we, you can get a glass of wine and, uh, you know, some kind of great appetizer or whatever, and just chill out there. A lot of the cabins and camping and stuff like that, you may not have TV and, you know, internet where you are, but you can, kind of, you know, hang out at Bear's Den and you've got it all right there. So, People are really taken to it. It's it's and we wanted to keep it unique again and kind of another knock your socks off kind of place. So. Right, it is truly like a a, a uh, cozy and cool uh, bar to, to go hang out. So you guys are just basically bringing some nice class to the well, Texas Hill you. Country. Thank you. We we wanted to create the kind of places <laughs> that we would seek out and find and love and just want to mm-hmm. go back and want to tell people about and. So um, that's kind of you know how it all happened, and 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 people are really really taken to it. Bears Den is is starting to take off, and you know we we just couldn't be happier. It's been a I say a smoky road getting here, but you know the, the, <laughs> the sunshine is back out, and we've got our bigger better bears market, and then uh, you know Bears Den is 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 going very well. So and then the food trailer that stemmed off of our Bears Den as well. We wanted to provide some of that great stuff when you're down on river road floating in the river or you know whatever it is you can come get food to go yeah right. we even do boudin and you know all kinds of things robert my hubby he's from north carolina but he lived in louisiana for five years so he does a lot of that cajun you know cajun uh, influence as well and a lot of the things that we do at bear's market that are stuffed skewered ready to go for the pit you know let yeah okay yeah. Right, let right, us chop yeah. it and slice it and dice it and stuff it and that way you can spend more time with the family or in the river or whatever. It's it's just ready to, to take home and, and cook. And then we do a small amount of prepared foods too there as well. So yeah, it's 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 going well. So the moral of the story is never underestimate the power of unplugging. Sometimes it's worth spending a little extra money to take a trip somewhere, discover something new, discover something in yourself that's new. And truly, you know, live life a little bit, you know, quote unquote, off the grid. So as always, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Shauna Game. You can check out Jeff on Instagram at The Traveling Game. And as always, if you love this podcast, do me a favor, share it with your friends, shout it out on social media, and head on over to the link in the show notes to leave us a review.